last night when you told me that you'd stop at nothing. I confess I thought you had honest meanness in mind. You figure she's attached to me? Are you just calling me a lizard? Whatever my daughter feels or does not feel for you, I want it ended. Now. You're so far gone and hate for me that you turn your back on some hard cash money. I might consider it. I might indeed. If you had any other name but Quick. You sure about that? What is this, fire? You ain't showing me how rough and tough you are. You think I had this done? It crossed my mind. You quick to the barn burners. of a breeze gently stirs all the trees and a bird wants to please my ear the long hot summer oh so slowly moves Hot Summer, brought to you by In Frenchman's Bend, Will Barner has everything worth owning because he fought for it. But he never really knew what a fight was until he came up against Ben Quick, a man with nothing to lose. Boy! Boy! No boy around here. I want to talk to you. I told you something about trespassing the other day. <laughs> you did considerable running off at the mouth the other day. It's always been a problem with you quicks. Thirteen years worth. Look around you, boy. Rack and ruin. Pure neglect. Even when your daddy had this place going, it wasn't much. You really figure to get a crop in? Make this into a farm again? Yes, sir. Three weeks, that's the outside. Three weeks to get your ground cleared and broken, your seed in. I reckon 18 days. Using what for money? How do you figure you get the machinery and labor to get the work done? You think you'll get a bank loan? Not in your backyard. You bitter boy. Somebody treats you impolite down there at the bank? I didn't give him that chance. I know who runs that bank. You think I'd turn it down? Treat you unfairly just because I don't like it? You did say something about seeing that I don't stay around here too long. Correction, boy. I said I was halfway tempted to let you stick around this town just for the sheer pleasure of chopping you off at the ankles. And I did let you stay. I let you stay the best part of a week. When's the chopping start? You'll know. You sat down to play with the adults, boy. You sat down in the big, mean, no-limit game for all the money. You get hurt, it's nobody's fault but your own. Nothing else? That's all. This is what you were looking for? From the Farmers Trust over in Jefferson? Application of a loan denied. Hand delivered. Figured you'd want to know right away. You start to hear something, boy? That's chopping.
false work, Mr. Quick. Now, wait a minute. You blaming me? Now, what do you suggest? Well, you were the one who was riding that horse. That's the word I'm seeking. It's funny, isn't it, Mr. Quick? Every time we meet, there seems to be an accident. And I seem to be the one that it happens to. Well, you know what they say, Miss Claire. It's always the woman who pays. Come on, I'll help you up. <clears throat> no, thank you, Mr. Quick. I have a feeling that the least amount of personal contact I have with you, the safer I'll be. You may be right. Excuse me. Would you do me the kindness of fetching my horse? Then look at that ankle first. You sit. What's the matter? I don't like big, strong men who think it's their born privilege to give orders. I get enough of that at home. All right, all right. I'll get it for you. idea at all whose road this is? If you follow this road far enough, you'll find it leads through the Varna timber cuttings. Is that a fact? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll be running into you. I hope not, Mr. Quick. The price of aches and sprains is more than I'm prepared to pay. Lucas Tanny and his boys liked to kill Ben quick if your daddy hadn't stopped him in time. And still, when they told him to go, he just stood there and defied him. He defied your daddy, too. Tangerine, what do you think? Claire Varna? You're the most exasperating one female I've ever seen yet. Sitting there pretending you're not interested. For your information, I'm not interested. Some scruffy looking no account comes slopping back into town after 13 years, and you act like it's a young Lockenbach come out of the West. Well, pardon me all to pieces if I happen to hit a nerve. Maybe I'd, uh... Respectable, Missy. I try to be, Papa. Ah, morning, Miss Amy. Good morning, Papa. Morning, Clara. Hey. What's that? You been wrestling a bear, Missy? No, Papa. I had Blue Boy out this morning. Mm, so I hear. I warned you about that hammerhead. It's a fine animal. I plan a gentleman. Apparently, he don't know about it yet. Tell me, where about did you ride? Well, the timber road up by Mallard Pond. Mm -hmm. That road cuts through quick property, you know. I didn't know that, Papa, but... But what? I saw him today. Ah, he's the one who caused a horse to shy. That don't surprise me, Miss Amy. Trouble hangs over them quicks like smoke over fire. It was the same with his daddy. Maybe Mr. Quick turned out different than his father. I doubt that. Anyway, he ain't gonna be around long enough for anyone to find out. But till he's gone, I'd be obliged if you'd ride elsewhere. Yeah? Well, you got nothing to worry about there, Mr. Varner. Claire was just telling me how downright odious she finds Mr. Ben Quick. Well, you did. You keep it that way, Missy. 
samozrejme. For a scruffy young no account that, Ben Quick sure has his town in a swivet. Brought you them shingles. Going dry? No, contaminated. Felt the bottom it was all calm. Just one of the seams opened up. Brought you two by fours, along with them shingles. Guess you'd have to take them back. You fix all the leaks? No. Can't pay you. That bank loan I was counting on from Jefferson fell through. How you figure on getting your crop planted? You got any money at all? Not much. But I got me a single furrow walking horse plow in the barn there. Well, if you'd like to pick up an extra dollar or two, I could use a helper. Nights, anyway. I get quite a few odd jobs. Well, I'll get you. I mean, the way the rest of the town feels about me, what makes you different? I was friends with your daddy. Some of us felt he was treated real bad. Me, George McBain, some of us. Much obliged. Time's getting short. There is an easier way. Yes, it just gotta be. Fellow lives north of here, Lucas Tanny. He's got a good stream you could cut right into. Uh, Tanny and me, uh... We ain't exactly buddies. So I heard. But he's in pretty much of a tight for money. Losing his job with Vaughn and all. Me, I'd try him one more time. beyond my sense of charity? I had a taste of your charity the other day. When the serpent cometh into your garden, you take what steps are necessary. Now, if you was wise, you'd light out right now. You're so far gone and hate for me that you turn your back on some hard cash money. What's that? I came to offer a deal. Part of my crop. In return for what? I want to cut into your stream. I'll do all the work. All you have to do is collect your part when I get my crop to market. And I sure got all the sweet water I need. I might consider it. I might indeed. If you had any other name but Quick, now you turn around and get. of you. Whatever happens from now on is on your own head.
me what you're doing, Mr. Quick? What'd Miss, you say? I said, would you mind telling me what you're doing? Fencing off my property. That meet with your approval? Now, you tell your daddy when you see him that his timber road is now cut off. He wants it opened up again. He can come talk to me, but he's going to have to bring some money. Aren't you clever, Mr. Quick? Well, I'll take that as a compliment. I'm sure you meant it so. Pardon me. Would you mind telling me how I get through this? Well, the best way you can. I didn't invite you to ride up here. But I, uh, I've heard horses have been known to jump fences. Well, this horse is not a jumper. Well, I just don't know what we're going to do in that case. Well, may I suggest something? You just might take it down. <laughs> well, I just put this fence up, and I'm not going to turn around and take it down just because Miss Clara Varner tells me to. Well, I just got finished telling you that this horse is not trained to jump. Neither am I. Talk about accidents, Miss Claire. This one's on me. Oh. Hey, ah, uh, week or so you'll be up and around. Week or so? What are you talking about? I'll be up tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, you'll think a herd of elephants trampled on you. You got a couple of pretty badly cracked ribs there. You're gonna have to stay flat on your back. I got a well to dig, and I got a crop to plant. Tell me, I'm gonna do that on my back. I'm sorry, Mr. Quick. You're just not gonna be able to exert yourself. That's what you think. Oh. Now we both think so, right, Mr. Quick? Here, swallow this pill. You really ought to be in the hospital. No hospital. If it's money. No hospital. You got someone to help you here? You're going to need a certain amount of care. I'm all right. Well, I'll have a nurse sent in, Doctor. I don't want your nurse. I don't want your money. Please, Mr. Quirk, I blame myself for you being here like this. The least I can do is pay for your care. Trying to buy yourself a clear conscience, Miss Clara? You really are your daddy's daughter. Yes, ma'am. I'm afraid this discussion's pretty much academic. You won't be able to find a nurse anyhow. That settles it. Good night, Miss Varner. Excuse me if I don't see you at the front door. Mr. Quick, I am trying very hard to sympathize with you, but your attitude is making it very difficult. I'm always a little short-tempered when I get my ribs kicked in. You're impossible, Mr. Quick. Good night, Doc. Good night, Mr. Quick. Much obliged. Will he keep till morning, Doctor? Oh, he'll sleep like a felled ox. But he is going to need some care. Well, then he'll get it. Whether he likes it or not. Good night. Good night. I sure do admire your fine Christian attitude, Miss Clare. I, indeed, I do. In regard to what, Mr. Quick? I must be kind of a trial, you serving me so, considering the way you dislike me. I don't dislike you, Mr. Quick. Ray, for our side. I don't know you well enough to dislike you. You'll have to give me some more time for that. All you need. I do remember you from school, though. So you were telling me. 
first day I came back. Said you, when you were a little girl, you thought I was mean and scruffy. And cold-eyed. That's the one thing I do remember about you most, those cold blue eyes. Well, you got a name like Quick. You develop a cold blue-eyed look. You develop it early. matter with the name of Quick? Well, you must have heard. No? Uh, quick. It was a big family once. Shiftless, no account, so they said. I had a bunch of uncles and cousins who weren't exactly virtuous. And my grandpa was a barn burner. You must have heard that. I don't even know what that means. It means when one man burns another man's barn down. That's what it means. I don't say it's right. But the law does not always work on the side of the poor man. Barn burning was my granddaddy's way of seeking justice. So when you have a name that stinks of fire, kerosene, wood smoke, there you develop a cold blue-eyed stare. You learn it from the people you meet on the way. Would you mind answering the door? Why not at all? Well, he kind of came with the place. Couldn't turn him out. Looked so mean and scruffy, I felt kin to him. Speak, baby. Speak. Come on. Speak, boy. Now, this dog's a true quick. He's not likely to do a trick for Ivana. <laughs> Mr. Quick, what say we declare a temporary ceasefire until you're up and about again, hmm? Be fine with me. Just fine. <laughs> I came to speak with you, sir. I told you I don't want you around here anymore. Didn't I make that clear? You fired me without reason, Mr. Warner. You don't call beat the man half to death reason enough? He was in need of a lesson. Lesson? If I hadn't come by and stopped you, you'd have killed him for sure. I want Ben Quick rid of just as much as you do. Maybe more. And I don't like the way you went about it. What happens between me and Ben Quick is no concern of yours. His daddy killed the best man I ever knew. When that boy came back into town, I warned him. I warned him twice. Don't try to settle here. I said, I don't want no quick trash here. I even tried to take him to the county line, peaceful. And then he defied me. And then I smote him down. There's nothing more to say, Lucas. I'm the best stock foreman you ever had, Mr. Warner. That you were. And every Saturday, come wind or high water, you got paid for it. I find it hard to beg any man, Mr. Varner. But I'm doing it now. My boys had hard luck with their stock this year. I got machinery payments to make. 
I need that job back, Mr. Warner. I need it bad. Impossible. Because you say so? Because you made it so. You know what they're saying in town? They're saying that I sent you out there to give Ben Quick that whipping. But everybody knows you fired me for what happened. And how's it going to look if I hire you back within a week? Well, I never thought you'd stay sided with a quick against a man who served you well. Quick's in everyone's eye too much right now. But you are good at your job. Maybe when he's got rid of, we'll talk again. Take it like a man. This will be my home. This will be my home. This will be my home. the other day. Oh, this nursing's gonna be ruination for you. It'll make a farm woman out of you. Next thing you know, you'll be cooking hog jowl and collard greens. I've never tried that, Mr. Quick. Oh, you ought to. Mighty good. Well, you're just gonna have to settle for beef stew tonight. I'll leave it to simmer. Should be done in about an hour. Miss Clara? Yes? Uh, can you give me a hand? I think I'll sit at the table for a bit. Smell fragrant, Miss Clara. <clears throat> Mr. Quick, I thought I made it I quite know, clear to you that. You're here to quiet your conscience. Just thought I'd mention it anyhow. <laughs> Give me that pamphlet there. Want to see something interesting? Yeah. It's a new type tomato. BF-145. Well, now, isn't that fascinating? That's what I'm putting in. When? Just as soon as I hear from your daddy about that timber road. It's a brand new kind of tomato, and this baby's gonna put me over the hump. You look around you now, you don't see much. But just you wait. I didn't come back to this place to scratch out a living on a one-mule farm. Why did you come back, Mr. Quick? What is it you want? <laughs> Your daddy asked me the same thing in his very room the day I came back. You know what I said to him? I said, everything, Mr. Varner. Everything you got. Ah, those are pretty brave words, Mr. Quick. Big words, Miss Clara. 
Oh, he just stood there and laughed at me. That surprised him? He didn't start out with much more than this. He didn't start out with Will Varner against him. I know, he's supposed to be a rough man. Miss Clara, I came up a rough road myself. He's not gonna drive me off this place, not him. Not anybody. I'm here to stay. Why is it so important to you? Follow the harvest, Miss Clara. You live in tar paper towns, rented rooms, and you get your juke joint fun hot and fast Saturday night. And then you catch an empty freight come Monday. You never even bother to ask where it's bound. It really doesn't matter. You're not going anywhere special. After a while, it's like that bow weaver you were singing about. This will be my home. Good night, Ben. You found a what? A fence, a three-barred fence, right across the timber road. We're not going to be able to get our trucks up there when cutting starts again. You mean to say you can't knock down a little old three-barred fence? Not and keep this side of the law, Mr. Varner. I checked with the county. It's Quick's land. He's within his rights. That's an example of the pure, mean cussedness you can expect from any Quick. Though, come to think of it, it's probably what I'd have done if I'd wanted to dick him a meal deal. I'd say you better give him his deal. Pay him for the use of his road. Not one dime, not a nickel, not one red cent. <laughs> you got no choice. I could cut me a new road up around the mill. Well, that would cost you about $10,000. All I'm asking you is two. You think you got a grip on me, don't you, boy? Right where the pig squeals loudest. Yeah. Well, I'd cut me a hundred miles of road through solid granite before I'd give you penny number one. There's something you don't know, or maybe you just forgot. Remind me, boy. Jog my memory. Rule one, Mr. Varner. Don't take on someone who's got nothing to lose. Because there's nothing he won't do. No place he'll stop. No place. I can see I'll just have to pay you a bit more attention than I had first thought. Jody, you didn't have to say it was inside the lie, did you? But it was inside. Is anything to ease in this fire trap? Stop. Hi, Clara. Hi, Susan. And how are you today? I'm fine. That's nice. Did you win? With honest Abe here. Perish the thought. Well, what's the matter, darling? He give you the day off. Day off? Susan, for Pete's sake. Excuse me, honey. My big blabbering mouth. I'd like to know what you meant by that, Susan. Ben, quick, Dumpling. It's not exactly a burning secret, you know. You can invite him to Jody's birthday party. I just mentioned how you've been going out every morning early. And how you seemed happier and all. And then the other day we saw you going up that road. I didn't mean to pry. Well, what are you doing, honey? Playing house with that farmer boy. I saw him in town the other day, and he's kind of cute. 
Though they say his family connections aren't exactly. Jody. Hi. I'd be obliged if you'd take your guest elsewhere. Yes, sir. Come on, Susan. I'll require an explanation of what I just heard. I've been out visiting Ben Quick every day this week, Papa. I've never been able to impose my will on you with any degree of success. But I would have thought you'd had enough plain common horse sense to obey me in this. I'm sorry, Papa. It was something I had to do. Blue Boy ran him down. It was my fault. He was badly hurt. He needs care till he's up and about again. What's happening to you, Missy? Are you growing up to be someone I don't know anymore? What are you talking about, Papa? What you just told me is a lie. It is not. Ben Quick is as well as you are. He was hurt, Papa. I know he was hurt. I know the difference between a well man and a sick man. I was out there last night. Call it a lesson, Missy. Maybe next time you'll heed me. Maybe next time... got manners. I wasn't referring to your manners. I was referring to your play acting. <laughs> well, we're, we're fast menders, too, Miss Clare. I'm glad you find it so amusing, Mr. Quick. Why'd you find out about me? I was doing a pretty good job of it. Apparently, you didn't last night when my papa was out here. Oh. Mr. Quick, I don't like being made a fool of. Come now, Miss Clare. It's not all that bad. And uh, you can't blame a man for wanting your company. Was it my company you wanted, Mr. Quick? Or did you think you had a chance to hurt my papa through me? Miss Clare. You do yourself a big injustice. I felt pity for you, nothing more. Pity for what? For the life you had, for the boy you were. If you had any other thoughts, Mr. Quick, then you were the victim of a sorry misapprehension. You sure about that, Miss Clare? Sure about that. What's the matter? I'm not one of your Saturday night girls, Mr. Quick. There, you could have fooled me. I think it's time we had us a talk, boy. I've been having some second thoughts about that access road. I'm ready to talk business. The catch being what? I'm buying you out of my life. My life and my family's. Is that clear? That's not necessary, Papa. You go on now, honey. I'll finish this discussion with Mr. Quick. I'll not be bothered for, Papa. 
I'm a human being. And I set a high value on myself. Don't you see that, Papa? Sure now, honey. You go on along home. Last night, when you told me that you'd stop at nothing, I confess I thought you had honest meanness in mind. But I never expected this. You think I let her on? My daughter has always had a great fund of compassion. Even when she was a little girl, the house was always full of injured creatures. Cats, dogs, lizards even. Sometimes she grew greatly attached to them. You figure she's attached to me? Or are you just calling me a lizard? Whatever my daughter feels or does not feel for you, I want it ended. Now. You always get what you want. And you'll get what you want. Two thousand dollars credit with me. You'll get your crop planted. You say credit? That's right. And if I ever see you so much as look at my daughter again, so much as take a casual glance at... How rough and tough you are. You think I have this done? It crossed my mind. You quicks are the bomb burners. When I fight, I... First it was a serpent in your garden. Now it's thou shalt not kill. You ever hear the devil quote in scripture? Please. Please. All right, sit up. You know what'll happen when you tell him, don't you? I'll lose my farm. He won't abide this. I, I know him that well. Who? Mr. Vaughn. Danny, you get off my land, and don't you ever come back. I never saw you here. Didn't find him? Gave me the slip. Much obliged. I'll see you, Mr. Varner. Hey, we haven't shook. On uh, what? The 2000, our deal. We ain't got no deal, never had. You'll fail now, for sure. You'll never make the market work in this farm by yourself. Yeah, well, at least I won't have your ring in my nose. No. 
time was when I thought getting rid of you would be a lot harder. It turned out to be a lot easier than I thought. Mr. Varner, you're still trespassing. <laughs> with your fields. You don't owe me anything. Well, we figure we do. And we always pay what we owe. Well, uh, I reckon we'll get started. I left some things, pots and... I washed them up. They're on the table. I understand from Papa. You have no deal with him. That's right. Well, I want to thank you for that, Mr. Quick. From the bottom of my heart. Whatever your name is. Come on. Come on, let's go to work. And now, scenes from the next episode of The Long Hot Summer. What'd you do that for? I didn't ask to be took to no hotel. Someday, I'll dine at your table, and you pass me the wine and walnuts, and we'll both pretend we're quality. If gold were feathers, boy, you'd soar like an eagle. <laughs> and I can make it the rest of the way without your help. You're mistaking me all the way down the line. No mistaking an open door. Now, you just listen I'll to me. I'll handle this. Nobody's ever been known to blackmail me with any degree of success. Blackmail. <laughs> Ain't no blackmail intended, mister. I'm not in the mood for your wit, Mr. Quick. Speak out. The world belongs to those who know what they want and take it. Where is she? Who? Eula. You think she's here? I know she's here. The long, hot summer Seems to know every time you're near And the touch of a breeze Gently stirs all the trees And a bird wants to please my ear The long, Oh, so slowly moves along.